Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Obito Potato, and this is U-Boat, a submarine strategy simulation game that puts you in control of one of the most iconic weapons of German destruction, the U-Boat. Published by Deepwater Studios, this is uh, a game that's still very much in early access, and as such, there's a lot of things that may change throughout the development process. Uh, there's only a sandbox mode at present, but that is more than satisfactory enough and gives you a really, really, really good understanding of the game. Uh, I've played through the tutorial, so I'm going to go and uh, explain some of the uh, some of the strategic elements and try and uh, and try and explain how the game actually works. So we'll just boot up into a uh, regular old sandbox mode. I've turned off darker nights and I've bumped up the gamma just a little bit because I appreciate the viewing experience is quite important and trying to communicate some of the some of the more intricate details of life on the submarine is going to be a little bit more challenging in the dark. So uh, if you're playing at home, you're more than welcome to turn on uh, the darker nights. It certainly it certainly ends up being a, a very creepy place, the ocean, uh, in, in, in dark nights. But anyway, yes, uh, so, I think you might be a little bit surprised with what this game has to offer. This game can be played entirely in first-person mode, if you'd like. Uh, I'm not going to be playing in first-person mode, because I think it's the lesser way to play the game. Uh, but fundamentally, this game gives you control of a submarine which is pretty darn cool in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and it has you undertaking a whole bunch of missions for German High Command in order to advance... in order to advance the German cause during the Second World War. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Right, so we're in. This is the overview of our submarine. I'm going to pause the game uh, just briefly and talk a, a little bit about what we've got going on here. So this is our U-boat. Uh, I don't even know what the name of this U-boat actually is. I think it's U-boat 96. I think that's the default one. Um, yeah, so this is this is it. This is going to be our home and uh, our our place of work for the next however long we spend on this boat. And I must say, it is an absolutely magnificent beast. It really does uh, look utterly terrifying. Uh, you can definitely see where the whole being scared of these things came from. It looks... It looks terrifying. It looks like a shark that is sort of birthing out of the water. It's, it's very, 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 very intimidating. Uh, anyway, yes, if we zoom in, then we can see a sort of deconstructed... A deconstructed overview of the U-boat. And so, uh, if we go from, we'll go from the aft to the front, the stern, no, stern, aft, this is definitely the aft, I think the stern is the front, but we'll, we'll, we'll roll with this for now. Uh, yeah, so in the, so in the back, in the back here, we've got, um, we've got a compressor, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the features as we go, if I click on, if I click on a person, uh, then we can see some of the, some of the stations where we can get people to, where we can get people to work. These are our officers down here, and the officers are controllable units, which you can either play as in first person or just give individual orders. Uh, so it's sort of like a real-time strategy game, and you have the ability to pause and issue orders at any point. So we've got the diesel compressor up at the back, the electric compressor, the workshop. Uh, we've got the bulkheads at each and every stage. Uh, we've also got the diesel engines here, ventilation, the galley, the storage room. We've got a table, this is the officer's uh, sleeping quarters, I believe. We've got a light switch, we've got a pump, we've got an echo sounder, we've got a gyro compass. We've got depth steer station, we've got a navigator station, we've got uh, periscope observation. Uh, we've also got some more stuff down here. We've got a radio room, we've got a listening room, officer's bunk, officer's bunk. And we've got the torpedo launchers up at the front. So there's a whole bunch of different stations, and we can issue, uh, we can issue a whole bunch of orders from a whole bunch of officers. So we've got a, I mean, we've got two engineers. These guys are two engineers. You are a radio operator, I believe, and you two guys are navigation. I think it is. That's our captain. This guy is something. I don't actually know what his role is. I believe he's just a, an all-round an all-round good guy. Second in command. Sure. Let's give him that role. Uh, if Also, if we take a little uh, little look upstairs, we've got an attack periscope. 
We've got the conning tower, um, and then we've also got the exterior hatch. We've got a targeting site, and we've got a searchlight over here. We've also got a couple of guns on the on the roof of the ship. On the roof of the ship, does a submarine technically have a roof? I don't know. I'd like a fact check on that one. Uh, so anyway, as I sort of mentioned, we are in port at the moment. We haven't sailed out into the into the big blue into the big blue ocean. But that's okay, because there's a couple of little different things that we can do here. First of all, we can visit the warehouse. We can visit the warehouse, and we can have a look to see if there are any upgrades, or uh, if we need to resupply our ship, we can have a look at some of the stuff in stock, and we can use all of this stuff on board our vessel. Uh, this is the stuff already in the storage room, and this is the stuff that we can buy if we really want to. I'm not going to dive too much into this at the moment. I want to talk a little bit about the features and the way that the game plays as we're sailing to our objective. Also, I can recruit people, uh, and the leading officer, I'll go to the leading officer. Admiralty is deeply impressed by your last patrol. Thank you very much. I haven't been on a patrol yet. I'm a, I'm a brand new captain. Are there any orders? For my eyes only. All right, great. What have we got? We've got three missions. We can select a mission. I think I'll take the, I think I'll take the low difficulty mission just so that it gives me an opportunity to talk a little bit about the features and whatnot. Uh, yes. Okay. Good. So that's that. We've got our orders. Uh, now let's talk about the main way that you can set sail in this game. So we'll go up here to the map screen, and to be honest, this is one of my favorite screens. I just, I, I love it. I love it. I love looking at, I love looking at this. So this is uh, this is the map, as you can see. We are now based in France, U-boat seventy six, uh, U-boat U-boat ninety six. That's us. Uh, these are friendly ports. These are enemy ports. All across the UK. There's also uh, Gibraltar down here. Anyway, uh, this looks to be our this looks to be our uh, sector that we're going to need to try and patrol as part of the objective that we have just been given. So that's very, very cool. Uh, what we're immediately going to do is we're immediately going to plot a course. We're still in the pause menu, uh, we're still in the pause mode, so we don't really need to worry about that too much. But yep, 1,060 kilometers to our uh, objective where we need to patrol, and we need to travel 2,000 kilometers inside the marked area. Uh, and we may get orders once we're once we're close to this area anyway. So I mean, we probably will get orders to be honest. But you know what? Let's uh, let's you know let's let's plot like a let's plot like a two thousand kilometer course or something in this in this area as that's what we're being tasked uh, with doing. Okay, great. Let's prepare this ship for actually going and setting sail. Because there's nothing more, there's nothing more awful than hearing a, a YouTuber just chunter on and talk for eight minutes and then uh, and then not do anything. Okay, so uh, we're pretty much ready to go. Let's uh, let's unpause and let's get ready to let's get ready to sail. Detection unknown group. Yet yeah, we'll talk a little bit about this as we go. Uh, but there's nothing too much to worry about at the moment. Let's go and set our ship into forward... Forward 3. Let's go. There we go. We are now sailing. It's literally that easy. You press one button and you're going. Uh, we can probably go through uh, all of this stuff at the moment. Uh, so this is our dive meter, our depth meter. Yeah, so we can we can dive if we want to, although we don't really want to dive at the moment. It's very, very inefficient to, uh, to sail. Whoa. Alright, my bad. I hit into the to the pontoon and a Apparently, I'm going to do that again, but that's okay because that's the sort of mistakes that I tend to make again and again and again. It doesn't actually matter. There's, 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 I don't think we can get damage from the from the side of the harbor. Anyway, yeah, so we can we can dive, but we're not going to. Uh, we've also got the rudder here, which is trying to push us round to our projected route, but it can't because there's a harbor in the way. So that's something uh, to, to bear in mind. But anyway, we'll start to turn and we'll start to head towards our objective now. Uh, yes, what I was going to say is that it's really, really important to note that whilst we're on the surface, uh, our diesel motors are in operation. So if we have a little zoom in, you can see right at the back, uh, or right here actually, uh, we have to click on a 
engineer to, to be able to see. Yeah, so the station is occupied by an engineer at the moment. The diesel engines are currently in operation. Now, we do have, we do have an electric engine, which is here, right? It's right here, but you can't actually see it now, I don't think, but it's... It's here. It's right where I, my mouse is. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make is that diesel engines are the only type of engines... Well, we can actually use electric engines on the surface, but uh, we can only use electric engines underwater because diesel... Uh, the diesel combustion process uh, consumes oxygen. So, you know, you have diesel and oxygen and you make an explosion. And that explosion is what powers uh, the diesel engines. Now, diesel engines can, of course, only work with oxygen. And when you're underwater, there is a very, very limited supply of oxygen. So we don't want to be using our diesel engines uh, underwater. We want to be saving. Uh, we want to be saving our diesel engines for when we're on the surface. Uh, if we take a little look at the sort of symbols up at the top, you can see that we've got battery capacity at the moment. That's at 100%. Uh, the gyro compass, which is a navigational tool. Uh, consumes batteries, but the diesel engines are providing uh, the batteries with more than enough charge to sustain us for uh, a while. Uh, we're at 87% fuel. We're consuming uh, we're consuming diesel in the diesel engines at the moment, which is fine. Consuming minus 20 per minute. Uh, 8,700 kilometer range, so we should have absolutely no issues sailing to where we need to sail, and then also doing our 2,000 kilometer round trip. That's not a problem. Uh, oxygen, we are on the surface, so I would expect no issues with oxygen. However, this is definitely going to be a consideration once we uh, once we go below the surface and start fighting allied ships. Uh, discipline. Discipline is also, you know, how, how well behaved everyone is, and at the moment it's rising. And mostly it's because uh, normal lighting is in order. So as long as we're not in sort of like full battle station super stress mode, then things are going to be fine. Uh, reputation and budget. Both of these are sort of function as the currency of the game that allow you to upgrade, uh, you know, your staff, your submarine, buy resupplies, etc, etc, etc. It's pretty, pretty sort of standard stuff at the moment. So we're in uh, speed 3, let's bump it up to speed 4, why not? No real reason to, no real reason not to. And we're going to begin our... We're going to begin our long sail towards where we need to go. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that we can modify the speed of the game, and we will indeed be doing that. Oh, tube 2 is loaded. That's important. That will come in handy in a little bit, but not really for now. Uh, what we really want to try and do is get into open sea, because at the moment we're still, well, in an inland sea, and therefore we can only modify the speed by uh, 2, by a multiplier of 2. However... We can fast travel once we get into the open ocean, which is what I'm really looking forward to do. Yeah. Radio transmission. There's been a transmission from HQ. Let's see what they're saying. Newman, who's the radio operator, he will receive some messages. Let's see what's going on. Have a fruitful patrol, U96. Thank you very much. And uh, your standing order is to patrol the sector BE. Yep. We are already... We're already doing that. Right, let's fast travel. Perfect, so with that, our journey is well and truly underway. And we're going to be setting sail all the way over to this sector. Now I'm fully anticipating, uh, this is not the this is not the fastest uh, speed that it can go by the way. Now we're in the open sea, and now we can really fast travel. There we go, perfect. So yes, as I'm as I'm as I'm sort of saying, uh, I'm really looking forward to fighting a ship. If we fight a ship, then that's going to really demonstrate the capabilities that our submarine currently has. It's a lot of stuff to think about. You always have to think about a lot of stuff, but kind of like faster than light, you know, you have the ability to pause the game and see what's going on. Right, what is this? So, we've just been given a new order from Berlin. Uh, we have information that crucial technology has been loaded onto the freighter Lady Hawkins. It must be sunk at all costs. Its predicted location is right there. Okay, so let's have a little look and see what we've got going on. So we can actually just straight away set uh, set course for the tiny group. Now, presumably... Let's just go there. Let's try and intercept it. Because it's moving. We're moving. It's a tiny group, so it's between two to four ships. So that's going to be... 
not challenging, but it will be, um, it will be interesting. Right. Okay, so we can't actually, can't actually do much whilst we're, whilst we're sailing super fast because it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit fast. Also, the knights might, uh, visibility might decrease just a little bit, but that's not too much of a problem. I think things will be fine. Uh, whilst we are still semi-light, let's take the opportunity to make sure that all of our torpedo tubes are loaded. I would really hate... Really hate to make sure... Are these electric torpedoes? All right, can I make sure that one of one person is um who's using the who's using the torpedo tube? It's being used by someone else? I mean, I know it's being used by someone else, but I'm not super thrilled that it is being used by someone else, but that's okay. All right, fine. I should just stop complaining. Right. Head up this way. Let's just get to the ship as soon as possible. The sooner the better, really. Discipline is still high. Fuel is obviously going down. But no worries. Let's get our... Right, here we go. We are now within range of the uh, of the transport of the transport group, which is lovely. Set a course to the coordinates. Yes, please. I want to sort of dive actually, but I'm not going to dive quite yet. We'll stay at two times speed until we're actually within range. Ah, here we go. Right. So, what have we got? They are now officially within sight of our submarine. So that's not too bad. That doesn't look like a dangerous war vessel. That looks like a freighter. Transport spotted. Yep, that's fine. But it seems like the Lady Hawkins is just a little bit evasive at the moment. It's just without, uh, just out with our range, our visual range, which is fine. Set coordinates for over there. Uh, what I am going to do, actually, is I am going to start... I am going to start diving a little bit because... This is a fantastic opportunity to talk about the first uh, really important mechanic. Uh, so visibility is currently at 93%. Now that is determined by a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, but basically cloudiness gives minus 7. Uh, surface noise is minus 75. So we kind of probably want to dive at least a little bit to try and get rid of some of our visibility. So I'm thinking that diving towards periscope depth, so about 9 meters, is probably a fairly reasonable proposition at present. Now hold on, it's not night. It's actually during the day. Okay, that's fine. Uh, can I select this guy, please? And then I would like to flood the valves, because we can only dive if we have... Um, if we put ballast into the tanks and then... Or if we... If we if we pump water into the tanks, then we can dive. That's what I'm basically saying. So there's big tanks on the side of the boat, and uh, if we pump water into them, then we will start to sink, and in order to go up, we pump them full of air. It's pretty much that simple. Okay, we're forward two at the moment. Let's leave it like that. So we're going to start to go down just a little bit. It's not going to be a very uh, long dive. In fact, we should be done relatively quickly. There we go. And now we're going to be on electric engines. So we are going to consume... Uh, we are going to consume... We are going to consume battery, but that's uh, unfortunately a necessary... A necessary... A necessary evil. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to assign someone to the attack periscope because we're going to want to try and attack someone. Let's have a little look on the map. Our site has diminished quite a bit, but that's okay. And let's also pump up the speed a little bit so we can go just that little bit faster. Okay. There we go. 
As I say, we are looking for the Lady Hawkins ship. That is literally all that matters at the moment. And hopefully we'll be within range of sight very, very soon. And we can start working on an attack plan. Detection, detection. Okay. Very, very close. Very close. We've got two out of the two out of the three boats. Do we have any intel on what these ships actually are? Not particularly. But that's okay because as soon as we get uh, as soon as we get up close and personal, then we'll be able to get more intel on the ships. We don't know which one is actually the Lady Hawking yet, though. That's okay. Our visibility at the moment is only 4%. Uh, we are still producing rather a large amount of noise, but that's not anything that I'm really super concerned about right now. Right, let's uh, start... Oh, hold on a minute. There's not a freighter there anymore. There we go. Okay, so that's Sunset Park. We definitely know what that is what the name of that boat is, which is quite important. Which one is Lady Hawkins, though? It's not a boat in the middle. It's presumably one of these freighters. Uh, but the problem is that with electric engines, I don't think I'm able to... Uh, I don't think I'm able to keep up, to be honest. All right. Okay. Hold up. We've got we've got intel on the Lady Hawkins. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. Right. Lady Hawkins set a course. Uh, Captain. This guy. Thank you. Uh, let's go back into map mode and have a little look. Right. Lady Hawkins is what we want to is what we want to target. We're not particularly interested in any of the other ships at the moment. Ideally, what we'd be able to do is sort of sneak up behind Lady Hawkins and eliminate it entirely just without alerting anyone else. So we will stay in forward uh, in forward three. But that's not a problem. Is there any way that I can make... make this work any better? Calculate torpedo route? Yes, I know. I want to follow that. I want to follow that boat, though. 52. We got a 52% chance of hitting. That's quite good, in fact. 62%. Right, so are our torpedo tubes up and running? Are we ready to... Are we ready to go? And the last time I checked... Didn't look like they were. Warm up the torpedoes. Preheating removes the chance for a dud torpedo. Yep, I will absolutely... Uh, I will absolutely come and do that. So let's get the engineer to come and warm up the torpedoes. Perfect. Now, if this works perfectly well, then I would be delighted if we sink, uh, if we sink the ship immediately. That would be perfect, but I don't think that we will. Let's get the torpedoes all warmed up and make sure that we're, uh, we're cooking with gas here. I, I hear Kaloi. Steam propelled torpedo or an electric propelled torpedo. So we're going to be firing three electric torpedoes and then one steam torpedo. I don't understand why some are red and some are black, but that doesn't particularly matter. Uh, so let's let's see if we can let's see if we can do this. A seventy-seven percent chance to hit. That's that's pretty darn good. I think that we're going to be launching the torpedoes at this target. Uh, so this is the this is the sort of targeting mode that we have to enter in. Uh, we've got four torpedoes at the moment. Again, not entirely sure why they're red, but hey ho, we're going to flood all tubes. Five tubes. Flood all five tubes, and then once they're all filled with water. Yep. 
We are going to begin the firing process to take out Lady Hawkins. 79% chance, 79% accuracy. That's pretty darn good if I do say so myself. Let's take this opportunity to fire. Boom, let's do it. Okay, so if we have a little, uh, a little zoom out here, we can actually see the firing process. It's not, it's not a very beautiful process. I've got to imagine that it'll be, <laughs> it'll be changed in a little bit. Uh, but that's fine. And actually, on the map, we can see the torpedoes will now start to start to speed up to the Lady Hawkins, which is hugely exciting, isn't it? Okay, the torpedoes are already being loaded, which is great. The, the new torpedoes are going to be loaded up. Are you working at the engine at the moment? Uh, I don't hate that you're on the engine, to be honest, uh, Felix. However, you are maybe better loading the torpedoes up. Uh, yeah, so you already are loading the torpedoes up. Okay, that's great. All right, well, as long as we've got, as long as we've got torpedoes being loaded, then that's great because we might miss with this current salvo and we can't afford to, to not take out the, the vessel. All right, let's speed it up. Let's let the torpedoes arrive. Torpedoes covered half the distance. We can actually watch. Oh, look, we can see it. We can see the torpedo just below the surface there. Hopefully it'll make contact. Doesn't look good. Doesn't look good at all. 40 seconds until impact. Well, that one went right past. Now, if I was a smarter person, then what I would have done is I would have lined my submarine up perpendicular to the, to the ship. Because at the moment, we're firing on a very, very small target. As opposed to what could be a quite big target if we're coming in from this angle and shooting it from, from this, this angle. 10 seconds until impact. Yeah, I don't think any of these are going to be a hit, to be honest. This looks like a... This looks like a little bit of a dud. If I uh, spot transports, apparently I can report that to HQ. And that gives me money. Great, okay, so is that all of my... Is that all of my... Uh, Hard-earned torpedoes that have just missed the Lady Hawkins. Okay, that's a huge travesty, actually. Well, let's let's prepare for another another crack. Let's go forward four. Um, do I want to surface? I think I do actually want to surface. Let's surface the ship, blow the tanks, and we'll get up to the surface. We're slowing down because we want to try and get within a proper range of this ship right here. So what I'm actually doing is demonstrating exactly why, exactly why you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to do what I just did. Okay. We're surfaced. That's great. Let's go and have a little look at what's going on. Uh, so our air reserves are quite low at the moment. So what would be a nice idea is turn on the diesel compressor. Turn on the diesel compressor so that we can actually, uh, so we can get some more air into the system. Now, I'm not particularly worried about our current situation. However, if we need to dive to escape any enemies, then that might... That might, uh, that might be a problem. Right. So, we should start to see our air reserves replenish. Okay, only two tubes are loaded at the moment. However, we're definitely going to be pulling up alongside the boat. Which is lovely. Lady Hawkins is now 90... 99% accurate. That's wonderful, I gotta be honest. That is absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's see if we can take a pot shot with two tubes. There we go. 
both tubes flooded. Once they're flooded, let's fire. There we go. Did we fire? Excuse me? Ah, there we go. Our torpedoes are in action. Sometimes you can only see you can only see them if you zoom out at certain uh, a certain distance, but we can actually see them just under the surface of the water. Twenty seconds until impact. I think this is definitely going to be a hit here. Is that one there? Oh, what do you know? It is minimal damage. However, we got another we got another tube. We got another torpedo coming in. Oh, man. Yes, come on. Hit. Hit, hit, hit. Oh, beautiful. That looks pretty fatal to me. Serious damage. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty darn good. Uh-oh. There's a, a new unknown group. Where's the unknown group? We've made contact with an unknown group, apparently. No, apparently we haven't. Okay, that was false alarm. False alarm there, folks. Okay, so how damaged actually is Lady Hawkins? So Lady Hawkins currently has very, very little HP, and that looks like it will degrade and therefore sink the ship, I believe. Lady Hawkins is sunk. So the radio operator now needs to go and sit in the radio operations room and tell everyone that we've sunk the ship. The ship the ship actually isn't sunk yet, although it looks like it is in the slow process of sinking. Let's get rid of the torpedo interface because we don't actually need the uh, torpedo interface. We're slowing down. Yep, slow, slow down and stop. And then let's go into here and let's select the radio operator and get him to go into the radio room. Assigned to the radio room. Yep. Get in here, man. And tell everyone that we sunk the ship. There we go. Click to send the report. And that is going to get us 50,000 bucks. Holy cow. Up from 6,150. Beautiful. What do you know? That is absolutely fantastic. And uh, if we have a little look at the ship, is it sinking? Looks like it's slowly sinking. But not very fast. But it's definitely dead. Uh, we still need to, to patrol uh, 2,000 kilometer, uh, kilometers, uh, kilometers within the marked area. But all things considered, given the fact that we missed four torpedoes, let's just ignore that fact. Uh, we did hit with two, and those two were enough to sink the Lady Hawkins ship. So I think that that's a pretty darn good place to, to leave it there for the first episode. I mean, U-boat pilot extraordinaire... It's not a very accurate statement in the slightest. However, I think that we did a pretty darn good job um, of demonstrating some of the features that, uh, that this game has to offer. Uh, we, uh, we obviously destroyed a U-boat. Hopefully, in the next couple of episodes, we will be able to utilize the listening room, which allows us to... Uh, listen to the uh, listen to the sound signatures of boats. Basically, I highly suspect that we're going to end up getting flooded, and we'll need to utilize the pump, maybe the echo sounder, uh, and I imagine that we'll probably need to start sealing some bulkheads uh, over the course of time. But we'll have to wait and see, ladies and gents. We'll have to wait and see because that will be done in another episode. Thank you very very much for watching. My name, of course, has been Over the Potato. This has been U Boat. I'll see you next time. Bye.